Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and this is the old smartphone challenge. So before me is the original Galaxy Note, the smartphone that made it the norm to have a large display on a phone, and the phone that really got me interested in reviewing. This was the smartphone to beat back in 2011, but how does it hold up today, and can I use it as my daily driver? So I actually purchased both versions of the Note, and I intended to use the US AT&T LTE model with the Qualcomm processor, but it was immediately a bust. So I just decided there was something wrong with it, it was a lemon. I had to retire it and hope the Exynos model fared better. And at first it didn't look promising at all. So I set it all up, I updated the Play Store and all of my applications, and that is where I found several of my apps were not compatible for some reason. Even when trying to sideload the apps, the phone was having none of it, and I was not able to fix the problem no matter how hard I tried. The interesting thing, though, is that the Qualcomm version didn't have any such issues. If you have any insights on that, I would appreciate it. Now, as I used it, I found that the Samsung apps worked just fine. Taking notes worked just like a charm. It's very akin to using an S Pen today. But using the Chrome browser was an utter disaster, often slow and completely unpredictable. It often could not load a page properly or slowed to a crawl. Now with only one gigabyte of RAM and only several hundred megabytes to actually work with, I wasn't surprised. Sadly, the YouTube app wasn't a much better situation either. It froze the phone twice and I had to force a reset twice. Typing was also laggy and slow with the original keyboard, which just made the phone overall worthless to use, though I do remember that the original keyboard always sucked. So at this point, I was about to throw in the towel and declare that this is just a bust of a challenge, wishing I had never challenged the note to begin with so that its memory could remain untainted. But then I had an idea. I rooted the device, uninstalled any bloatware, disabled any superfluous looking services, disabled laggy animations, and sideloaded Aptoid to get an older version of SwiftKey, which I wasn't able to install, so that I could actually type again. All of this helped tremendously, and the phone became responsive, just a bit slow. The problem is that most people are not going to know how to do the things that I did, and they just need a device that just works. Note, and yes, pun intended, I realized I could have installed a well-working custom NuGet ROM from XDA developers to further enhance my experience, but I wanted to keep an authentic Note feel. Once I actually got it working, it was time to go out and play with it. I took some camera samples and I was actually kind of impressed. A lot of the samples looked pretty good, even compared to something like the Galaxy S9 today. My biggest complaint was just some blowing out of highlights. The camera on the Galaxy S9 is 12 megapixels versus 8 megapixels, but a lot of the pictures look pretty good still. The one point that it really fails in is low light, just forget it. But there is a flash on the back of the note, so that did help the situation. Now taking just a little bit of a peek at the display, I'm really impressed to see how far AMOLED has come over time. So we've got a pen tile display, it's 800 by 1280. And you can just see that it's nowhere near the resolution of the Quad HD Plus that we have today. Plus the Pentile Matrix is not that nice diamond Pentile that we have now. Another notable thing is that once you turn down the brightness, it looks really grainy with lines across it. It just has that old AMOLED feel. But my biggest complaint is that it doesn't get very bright compared to today, especially when you take it outdoors. Still in this time period, this was pretty much state of the art. I was also tickled to see how far the S Pen's functionality has come along. Of course, there were some basic note-taking functions on the original note, and you could even click and double tap to get S Memo to come up. But I definitely don't find the pen feature as useful as I do on the Note 8 today. As a wrap-up, it can handle some current apps well enough, though of course multitasking is a bust with a measly one gigabyte of RAM. The Samsung web browser ended up being a speedy treat eventually, though, as it was optimized for this device way back when. No matter what I did, though, I could not get the phone to install some newer applications that I really need. And if older side-loaded apps from Aptoid are no longer supported, I'm just out of luck. This is overall an experience that I can't recommend for the average person. It's definitely a blast from the past, and that's nice, but it's a crippled one. And this challenge showed me that there is absolutely no reason to seek to purchase an older Android phone if you're on a budget. 
especially when there are so many new cheap ones that are coming out, even those meant for affordability in emerging markets with Android Go. You can also use Swappa to get a used newer model for a better price or just subsidize through your carrier. This feels like a really sad and wasteful truth. Perhaps older hardware could be saved if developers develop Android Go for that hardware with limited resources, but that's just not going to happen as there's not enough interest. If you aren't looking for a nostalgic experience, save yourself the frustration and get a phone that's meant for today's world, preferably with enough RAM. One gigabyte, not so good. Three gigabytes should be just fine. And also preferably one that gets monthly security updates because after all of this, privacy and security issues on an old device should be your first concern. So let me know what device you guys are using. Let me know if you're using an older device and how that's going for you. So this has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that you're notified of future videos. There's going to be more challenges released all this week. So make sure to check out that playlist. Have a good night, you guys. Bye!